Howdy everybody. I forget if I mentioned this before, but I haven't made a lot of progress on this project lately because I have been waiting until I get the videos caught up to where I'm at in the project. Um, I'm uh, pretty bad at making videos though, so you know I've been procrastinating making them. I'm gonna try to get this one banged out though. Uh, this video I'm gonna talk about how I drilled these air inlet holes and I'm going to touch on squaring this piece of stock a little bit, uh, mostly to point out how I did it wrong. So what I did is I started with my piece of stock oriented in the vices like this, uh, kind of sticking up. And uh, obviously it wasn't finished like it is, it was the raw stock. And when I put it in the vices, I guess I was basically just hoping it was sticking up straight. I don't know what I was thinking. So the first thing I did is I took this shell mill here and faced off what would eventually be the rear surface. What I did by doing that is I inadvertently made this surface here my reference surface for squaring the whole piece of stock, which uh, caused some problems. I'll try to touch on that later. Um, as you can see here, there really isn't a whole lot of room between the tool and the stock. Uh, this is with the machine at the full Z height, and this isn't the, uh, you know, this tool is fairly short, so there really isn't a lot of room here. Because of that, I was afraid that the, uh, the tool changer, while rotating, might slam one of the tools into the piece of stock. Um, so what I did is I, uh, ran each of the ops separately, each tool individually. Um, there was the facing, which I already did, and then there are five additional ops. So what I did is I just basically, you know, I had the facing tool in there, shut the door, um, moved the uh, piece of stock out of the way manually using MDI, I mean uh, using the, uh, whatchamacallit, MPG, and then retracted the tool, you know, moved to the next one that I was going to use, get open the door back up, then move the stock, you know, basically back. It would obviously move itself and then do this op. So the five ops that I did on this are, I did a, a spot drill on each of the holes. Every, every op was on each of the holes. Then I drilled in with a letter R drill bit. I believe I came down about half an inch. The letter R is a pre-drill size for a uh, 1 8 inch by 27 NPTF pipe fitting hole. Uh, I guess a tap for a NPTF hole. Um, then I also chamfered the top. Let's see, we got spot, R. Oh, I did a, a thread milling op in here to do the actual NPTF threads. And then I also drilled in about uh, 70 millimeters or two and three quarter inches to do a, a pilot hole for this air inlet hole. Um, I say that 70 millimeter hole is a pilot hole uh, because basically I drilled it with the machine to make sure that this hole was coming down very straight. The reason for that is, uh, as I mentioned before, I only have 10 millimeters of stock in here between the top of the face and the inside of the piston. So this hole had to go through the piece of, you know, through that 10 millimeters. In addition to that, there are these uh, dowel holes for the dowel pins that act as locating pins for the bottle caps. And the uh, air inlet has to come in through those dowel holes. So I had to drill, you know, um, get, I guess I can't hold this very well on point, but you know, I had to drill to the left of this dowel hole and to the right of that dowel hole. So, uh, 
you know, the accuracy of the pilot hole is paramount. After the uh, pilot holes were drilled, I took this uh, piece of stock and actually put it down on these vices. Because I actually, I don't have a bench. So I did everything on these vices here, basically. Um, in addition to not having a bench, uh, this is basically the only drill I own. I don't have any corded drills and I have no other cordless drills, so this is what I use to drill uh, the remainder of these holes. The total depth is um, about 9 inches, and like I said, I started with about 2 and 3 quarter inches. So I'd like to talk about this drill bit real quick, because it wasn't a, a very good choice. I'm going to see if I can zoom in on it, get it to focus. There we go. So this is a cobalt bit, and I bought this bit to do this job. Um, what I didn't realize, and I uh, checked back on the, I bought it from McMaster, Check back on the McMaster site. Uh, this bit is not really made for aluminum. Uh, I believe that the uh, center web is uh, a lot thicker than a bit that would be appropriate for aluminum. So when I started to drill the holes, um, you know, I put the bit in and drilled as I could. And basically, I would get one, a single long chip coming out of here. Uh, I would expect that two would come out. I'm not certain that, you know, it's supposed to be two. But obviously, there's two flutes coming off of here. Two cutting lips. I would expect two chips. One way or another, I was only getting one. And I didn't feel like the uh, bit was cutting very well. So what I did is I took this bit to a... Uh, a local sharpening place and uh, I took it to a sharpening place because I don't I've never sharpened a drill bit and although I do have a, a bench grinder it's still in the box and it's crappy and I don't you know trust myself to to uh, sharpen a bit so I took it to the uh, sharpening place and they looked at it and they're like okay do you want a, a split point on here or uh, you want to have it without a split point and I guess I was thinking that it would last longer if I took this, if I had it without a, a split point. So I told him no, brought the drill back, you know, put it into the next hole and started drilling and, you know, try as I might, it wouldn't drill at all. Uh, basically, you know, I was just running this thing in and it was you know, just rubbing on the bottom of the hole as far as I could tell, not cutting at all. So I took the drill back to the, the sharpening place and they uh, put a couple split points in there for me. And it does drill okay now, but instead of that long chip, or instead of two chips, I was getting a lot of small chips and they would pack up in the drill bit. Uh, basically that made it so that I had to do like some serious peck drilling to get this bit into here. Um, and you know, I didn't peck drill an inch at a time or even half an inch. Uh, I estimate that these nine inch holes took 32 pecks in order to drill. And uh, keep in mind, two and three quarter inches were already drilled. So essentially, 32 pecks for six inches is um, approximately three sixteenths of an inch per peck. In addition to all that, um, you know, drilling into here is not easy. Uh, and it was really draining these batteries. I was, uh, it took about one and a half batteries per hole to drill this thing. Um, basically all that's to say, you know, this was a 
a really laborious job and I do not want to do something like this again. I guess I sort of showed it a second ago, but uh, the procedure was I basically would drill in, do the 3 16 of an inch, pull the drill out. At that point, it'd be all packed full of chips up here. And I'd shake the chips off. And then I had uh, this cup up here. And I'd sort of, you know, run the drill inside the cup to make sure the, the bit was nicely lubricated. Go back into the hole and do another 3 16 of an inch. Uh, I, I didn't take note of the time of how long this took. But I, you know, I guess it took probably like three hours to drill these seven holes by hand. It sucked. But it seems to have worked okay. Um, these air inlet holes do line up nicely with the, uh, I guess, the other air inlet hole. So they all did line up. And when I put air in through here, I, saw, I see no reason why it won't come out all three of these holes in this uh, row of fixture stations. So I wanted to talk a little bit more about why making this, uh, starting with this surface was a mistake because I ended up making this surface my reference surface. And what that means is when I was squaring the rest of this piece of stock, because remember this was the first thing I did and the rest was raw. So when I was squaring the rest of the piece of stock, I had to make sure that uh, all the surfaces were either parallel or perpendicular to this surface. So I had to make sure this surface was 90 degrees to this surface and the side surface was 90 degrees to this one. Why that was a problem, and I sort of have a, a piece of like foam here to help me try to explain what I'm talking about here. Why that was a problem is, uh, what I had to do is just stick the piece of stock in the vise without parallels. Because if I had parallels underneath there, I would be creating, you know, uh, the bottom surface here would be parallel with the parallels. But it wouldn't necessarily be 90 degrees from this reference surface. So I had to clamp it in all three vices without any parallels. Then what I had to do is come in with a square and I stuck it down on the table there but for here I'll just kind of put it next to it and had to uh, adjust the piece of stock so that the reference surface was square to the bot to the surface of the table. And to do, to do that I got like a hammer and kind of tapped it let's say that way if I saw that the back was a little low, or I'd tap this side if I saw that the front was a little, I mean a little high, whatever. <laughs> then what I had to do is I came in with the touch probe and touched various places on the top of the surface here. Remember it's in all three vices. And if I saw that say this side was a little high, then I kind of tap here and you know, get it a little lower and then remeasure and make sure everything was square and come up with the square again um, and it was a real tedious process and uh, squaring off of a surface this thin you know this is an ideal this is a very short surface to put a square against so you can't really get a very good reading there well I think what happened now is I clamped down the vices and uh, like I said, I was tapping on the on the sides with a hammer. And I think what I was doing was I was essentially kind of bending the stock instead of merely shifting the angle at which it was uh, clamped in the vise. Well, I think, you know, when I had the stock bent like this and I surfaced the top, I ended up you know, if it, if it was bent in this direction, I ended up cutting a little more here than here. And, you know, if this isn't clear, I'm speculating here. But, um, I, I suspect when I release it from the vise, 
the material relaxed. And now instead of having a nice flat surface, I have a slightly bowed surface. It's coming you know, bowed this way. Well, then I took, you know, the piece of stock, flipped it over, stuck it on some parallels, and went around and tamped it with a, with a hammer to make sure it was flat against the parallel. Well, I think what I did there is instead of, you know, just merely matching my stock with the parallels, I was bending the stock in the other direction. And, you know, it was an endless cycle of back and forth. So I ended up removing more material from my stock than I needed. Or, uh, let's say, than I wanted. I hope that makes some sense. What I suspect would be a, a better way of doing this, and, uh, you know, take this advice with a grain of salt. You know, whatever you do, don't start here. Then, you want to start with, you know, your largest surface. And that's squaring stock 101. I ignored it. Uh, I'm dumb. So when you're squaring this, um, when you're doing the initial face on your reference surface, what I think would be a good idea, uh, if you're using multiple vices like I have here, is to open your vise up, put one set of parallels into your center vise, um, put the stock down on there, lightly clamp it down, tamp it down with a hammer, and then come in and just tighten these two so that you're not, you know, bending your stock to meet the parallels of the vise or, you know, some, you know, just use the stock so that you're not bending it. Put it in there so that it's as flat as it's going to be. Then face it off, flip it over, put it on parallels that way face it off. Hopefully that'll make it more square. Um, I guess since I've already started <laughs> yammering about this one, uh, what I did to face these sides here is I just came in with an end mill and uh, did side cutting along the side there. Um, I do think it's pretty square, but um, I wanted this to be 25 millimeters thick. And it ended at 24 millimeters. Uh, so it means I took an entire extra millimeter off here that uh, shouldn't have been required. Um, a millimeter, by the way, is about 39 thousandths, which is uh, a fair amount, actually. Okie dokie. I think I'm going to wrap this one up here. Uh, I uh, hope this was uh, entertaining, enlightening, whatever you want to call it. If uh, it wasn't, you know, tell me what was wrong with it. Too much rambling? I don't know. Anyway, see ya.